What is it, Katie? Big metal box. Yep, you're gonna tilt it up and lift it. Can you do it? Just a second. Okay, you good? Give me some help. Don't hold it. Keep pushing on it. Now you might be wondering why we just brought this giant metal box into our house and that is because we are very excited to have partnered with Ruxu today and they're going to be helping us expand our battery storage for our off-grid solar system. So we're very, very excited because we have been struggling with power this summer. Now that we're in the house, we have a full-size fridge and a deep freeze. We've tried to go with the most efficient appliances that we could find and because it's been around 37 degrees here consistently for quite a while. We've been running our AC, we've had company, so we're just really struggling to keep our batteries full. And for us, we have started small and we've been slowly adding to our system and changing things up to be more efficient. And we're just really excited to be adding some more batteries to the mix. Before we can get our new batteries in here, we need to get this area cleaned up. So our stairs go down right here and underneath, kind of around the corner, you can't see it, we have our batteries and then all of this kind of extra area. I've just been using as storage because we don't quite have that figured out yet. So we're going to get everything cleaned out of here. We're going to have to get our deep freeze moved so that we can get the... Uh, the rack, the battery rack, wheeled in under here. We've done some measurements and it should fit just barely. So that's definitely one thing to consider if you're going with these um, server rack batteries is you really want to make sure you have the right amount of space for these things because they're, they're big and they're bulky, but it's a ton of battery storage. So we're very happy that's going to fit in here. All right, now we have a little bit more space to work with. I've vacuumed up all the dog hair and dust and little spiders and uh, tried to put things where they can stay for a little while at least, um, just so we can stay a little bit more organized. So now we're gonna get the batteries installed into the server rack. And uh, from what I understand, it's pretty straightforward. So hopefully this is a uh, smooth sailing from here on out. Please, 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 please. That's close. Damn, that's perfect. That's freaking good. Yeah. This thing's heavy duty. This is the six slot um, bat server rack for the Ruxu batteries. It has a bus bar, heavy duty bus bar. The casters that it's on it are heavy duty and you can actually roll this whole cabinet around with six of the batteries in here, I would imagine quite easily. Uh, and those batteries are not light. 
But yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with this because this fits perfectly in the spot that we wanted to put it, which means we get to have eventually six server rack batteries. So today I will be installing three of them and what I want to do, the approach I want to make in this video is I'm not an expert, Katie's not an expert, we're just normal people living off grid, doing a DIY off grid system. There are other videos you can find on YouTube that break the batteries down and they go through all the nitty gritty. Um, Ruxu has very, very high quality built batteries they're impressive they're impressing a lot of big names on the internet who, who research this stuff all the time so we're super grateful that Ruxu sent us three beautiful server rack batteries to double our capacity in our system so this thing when you have everything installed it's super easy to access everything in here uh, i just pulled off the side of the battery i mean of the of the uh, cabinet the back has a latch as well and then of course the front opens up uh like a like a door so yeah, really easy to get in and check your batteries. Nice. Good. No, I need I need the, the cardboard or not. But... not light so this is the battery um, beautiful looking thing uh, it's got a Q what are they called Q, QR codes QR code on the top that, um, so that if you ever need to get, uh, to look at the manual you can just hold your cell phone over it it also comes with the manual this thing's actually pretty easy to read and it's very um, easy to understand which is nice because I again am not an expert but um, the wording is understandable. We'll leave it at that. Okay, we're gonna put this thing in the rack and see how long this takes us to set up. There we go, okay. Oh. Um, we have to get it around that bus bar. Hmm. I think, and this is tight. It's tight, which is good. that simple <laughs> tight All right, we just made a little bit of a mistake. There are some nuts that have to be installed into the framing and we didn't do that before we put the batteries in. So we're gonna have to pull them out and put the, the little nuts in place and then put the batteries back. So if you're installing this, make sure you have the nuts installed first before you put the batteries in because otherwise you'll be getting quite the workout like us.
Is that what you want? Go ahead. I don't know, something to push it in with. I'll go, I'll go find you one. by hand. While we're inside installing the batteries, I'm not sure if the camera is picking up all of the air traffic noise that is going overhead, but there are quite a few fires near us now. So there is uh, water bombers just going back and forth. We've been hearing a lot of activity lately. So far, nothing is too close to us, but still is very hot and dry and stressful. Cause it's all we're thinking about now, especially with the planes going over, reminding us what's going on. So now that I've got the batteries inside of the rack, I need to connect the ground. Um, these are the ground wires that come with each one of the batteries. So I'm going to connect from here to here to here. And then eventually when I get this installed and where it goes, this will go to the actual ground for the house. I want this. I don't want this like that, do I? I think you might because you're gonna have the big ones going that way, right? I think you're right. Just go like 
that. The outside or the inside? The outside looks easier. Let's see how Will did it. There. Much nicer. Because I'm a little bit of an electronic gumby, um, it took me a second to figure out exactly how to get these on so that they're nice. Um, the black cord covers the on off button, but you can swing this thing back and forth pretty easy and, and access that on off button. So that's not a, it's not an issue at all. Um, I love how this looks. That's so clean. I've got all the little caps underneath for whenever, but I'm so clean in there. Katie was just mentioning, it looks like we need three more because this is empty. <laughs> Might as well fill it. <laughs> Might as well fill it. Battery capacity is where it's at uh, with the solar um, setup. It's the most expensive part of the solar setup. And uh, it's, if you've got all the panels in the world, that's great. But if you don't have the battery storage, you're just wasting your time. So I like how it looks. The last thing I have to do is just put my communication um, cables. Simple enough. Start from C up to C down, to C up to C down. And then I can put this one from the top to my charger and it'll communicate the battery's information to the charger. Copper line from a very old town. This was just laying on a roof for the longest time, but this is in totally good shape, brand new. This is probably you put that above a roof. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they had to replace it. This was so back in the day. Well, this is RW90, so that's what comes from a transformer into a home, typically. But this is three three uh, gauge, which is too small for the average house. So, um, yeah. Anyway, RW90. Okay, that's not for this, and that's not for this. So they don't actually sell three gauge, but they have four gauge. So this will work. I just gotta crimp it on real tight. Okay, so this is four gauge to three eighths, and then four gauge to three eighths. Now I'm not sure if I need three eighths or five sixteenths. So these are five bucks a piece. See how that fits? It fits like it's actually four gauge. I mean, maybe it's a little loose, not really. That's great, no problems. So these cables that I'm building are so we can connect the battery to our system here. These are three gauge wire and uh, yeah, I'm just make, putting some lugs on them. shrinks with heat it's a heat shrink so this is our existing battery that we've been using for two years it's been I'm gonna say fine uh, we bought the cells from China we've had balance issues with it um, I mean it works just fine and we're really excited to add to this but um, for a DIY first time solar person, if I had access to the rack mount batteries um, when we bought this, I would have 100% spent the little bit of extra money for the ease and uh, all of that. 
Um, when I got these batteries, they were out of balance, so it took me forever <laughs> to balance them, and they're still not really balanced. Look at your shadow when you move your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Creeper under the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is 14 thousand watt hours roughly 48 volt system putting the Ruxu batteries in here is going to double that and it's going to be much more easy to service and it's going to kind of take care of itself so i'm looking forward to that eventually i'd like to replace this and not even have this diy system anymore and then just have a full rack mount power system probably with more Ruxu batteries so what i have to do now is get my power run up and over here uh, for the rack mount to come in to hook up to my two bus bars that I have here that I run everything to. When I have the rack mount in here, I won't be able to access any of this without pulling out the, um, the server rack. So I need to pre-set up all the wires so I can put them into the rack when I pull, pull the rack in. That's okay, I'm sure. Twist this crazy stuff here. So, that'll go in there. So I have extra cable so that because this is such a small spot in there, I'm gonna be able to pull this out and go service anything in there that I may need to service. So I think I just about cut it a little close to this one. I can still sneak in there and work in there now. I can pull this out just in case I have to deal with the old battery in there. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Should be pretty easy to install. Just gotta put some, uh, put some ends on here and hook it up to the bus bars in the rack mount. And then I guess we turn things on. Now the one thing I love about this rack is that's my negative and that's my positive. That's got a safety cover over top of it that works really, really well at keeping everything isolated, which gives me a lot of peace when I'm messing around in this, this thing. So I've got this hooked up. I've got this out long enough. I'm gonna have to find a way to manage the cables when I put it back in, probably just put it to the side. Um, the last thing I need to do is hook this up to that, to my, uh, all in one unit and hook up a ground, uh, hook up the ground screws to the actual ground in the house. Boop. Okay. All right. Can you pass me the flashlight, Katie? Again? <laughs> okay. So our ground's connected. No, don't do that. <laughs> our ground is connected. Oh, that hurts. Our ground's connected. Our positive and negative are connected. I only have to put the communication cable to the all-in-one unit now, and we are good to turn on the batteries. Where? You? There. Oh. Fault. Testing everything. Okay. We have 
battery. One. <laughs> Unos. Dos. So it looks like they're charging already. Yeah. Because they're flashing. Tres. So from what I understand, because I'm running these batteries in sequence together, so they need to communicate, I have to designate what battery is what. So this is my first battery, this is my second, and this is my third. So the little dip switch shows uh, which battery is what. So you can put up to seven, which I don't think you can get seven in here, but. good I can't wait to get more of these yeah okay so to recap all of this that I've just done we've installed three 5.12 kilowatt hour batteries that give us a total of 15.36 kilowatts of kilowatt hours of capacity it looks fantastic it's fit, it fits so well inside of our little nook here. No other manufacturer of rack mount batteries has a rack that is this small and has the capacity for this much. So we are super excited and very thankful for Ruxu for sponsoring today's video. A lot of research that we've done on this battery before we even were contacted by Ruxu because we were considering doing a rack system like this. Um, fortunately, this is exactly the right size of what we need. You can check out um, YouTubers like Will Prowse or Lithium Solar. They do a full breakdown on the battery. They get all into the nitty gritty and all of the, um, you know, all the technical stuff that really, Katie and I, we don't really know what most of that's about. But I do know that I can trust these two YouTubers and they rave about it. So we're going to have links down in our description if you wanted to check out the Ruxu uh, products. And while we're in here, we'll just go over our total system just so that anyone who is watching this and thinking about how they're going to do their solar system, we'll just show you everything that we're doing. So we've got the Sun Gold Power 6548, 6000 watt, 48 volt, 48 volt all in one uh, unit. Yeah, which is a charge controller, AC charger, and inverter. And we've been using this unit for a long time now, I think about a year now. So we were really happy with this unit. When we were taking all of our solar equipment out of the bus from our previous systems, we uh, pulled out the Outback solar charger and we decided to install it here. Um, we're gonna be upgrading our solar panels. So we wanna have as much power coming in as possible. And we're gonna have this and this going at the same time. But we currently have this one on because there is a really easy, uh, graph or there's a lot of information about the solar power that's coming in on this little screen which we like but I mean these all-in-one units work perfectly fine as well so and then at the recommendation of one of our viewers we have the uh, EG4 charge verter and this is so that we can use our we can charge from the generator quickly and safely. We don't have to worry about our electronics from the, the generator power coming in, which we have wrecked our espresso machine already from that. So we've got this coming in. It's a five kilowatt EG4 charge verter and it's been great. We didn't actually film the install of this because can't film everything. we can't fill it, film everything. Sometimes we need to take a break from the camera. So that's our system here and then down at our solar panels we have 2100 watts and we're running that about 500 feet give or give because it might be a little bit further um, and like I said we want to upgrade our solar panels because we're not quite getting what we need to come in especially with these batteries I think we're gonna really notice that 
we're not going to be able to get full on the smoky or partially cloudy days, maybe even full Sundays, right? I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably going to be pretty quickly that we're going to say, hold up, <laughs> we need some more panels, and uh, that's going to be another big project. So once again, check out the links in the description if you're interested in any of this stuff, especially the Ruxu battery uh, and server rack, and we will catch you in the next video.